Hey guys, Logan here, and if you're new, I'm currently trying to build my own race engine from scratch. Now, I'm a motorcycle mechanic, I'm having to pretty much learn everything as I go, and today we're going to start off with some casting. Now, I think it's been about four videos since we've done some casting, so the last time we did it, I had to go to barrel, this was the failed attempt, it has a bunch of random shrinkage, which at the time, I didn't know what caused it, I've come to the conclusion it was too cold, for example, if you look at this failed cylinder head from quite a while ago, the surface finish on this is amazing compared to this. Now, the problem with this was the mold was actually far too hot and the casting was molten for maybe at least half an hour after I'd poured it, uh, compared to this which probably was solidifying far too quickly. So to fix that, I'm just going to up the temperature a tiny bit, maybe another 20 degrees, and I'm gonna heat soak it for a lot longer so that the temperature across the mold from outside to inside is completely uniform and then as far as filtering i'm actually going to use a ceramic filter in line of the gating system and the last thing was the degassing method i've been using uh, so far has been degassing tablets i think they've got a shelf life they don't seem to be working very well anymore so i'm going to have a go at degassing with argon and see how that goes. So first things first, we're gonna see if we can get this into the mold. So it takes this little trooper of a printer about 21 hours to print out all the stuff for a barrel casting. And then yeah, just gotta square up this uh, ceramic filter and then slide it into its wee box and glue the lid on. This is it all glued together. Measure and mix the investment and pour it into the flux. After a day of drying, putting it in the kiln to do the burnout cycle. Now this is the argon bottle fitting and I'm going to have to make one of these male fittings here to attach it to the degassing lance. Which means turning some brass on the lathe. Right, the mould's finished the burnout cycle, it is the next day, it is cooled down, so fingers crossed it ain't broken. Well, I had a slight inkling that that was going to happen, but anyway, I'll just have to cast it like this, uh, and so while this is heating up in the kiln, I'll get back to machining. And there is my first attempt at making one of these fittings, so the moment of truth will be whether or not this thing leaks or not. Is it going to clip in, or is it already in? Yep, that's in. And then open up the bottle, up the rig, <laughs> look at that, it's not leaking, awesome, okay, now I'll just make a quick barb on this end, and this will be my quick connect for doing my degassing. So this long skinny tube is going to be uh, what I use for my degassing rod and now I've got to figure out how long it's got to be so probably want to put a, a bend in it here and I want it to come out to the edge of the lid and then I'll probably have my rubber hose go from there. Right, and here is the last piece of the puzzle. Now this is the fitting that will go on the end where our little filter will go in. So this is quite a tight fit. So I'm gonna heat that up and see if we can get the filter in there and then uh, weld it all together. Ah, oh, that didn't work. Mother f I'm Trying. I just wanted to go with the all pretty. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Suck my white! Hey, 
And there we are, have all the pieces to the puzzle. I have a degassing lance, I have the hose, this is just some brake hose off a of FXR 150, and then I have a quick connect fitting to plug the argon into the degassing lance. So let's quickly chuck it together. There we go. A degassing lance with a removable stainless filter. Now the kiln's just got up to temperature now, so I've got to leave it there for at least, I'm thinking three hours, because I do not want the inside to be cold. I'm gonna give this degassing lance a thorough test, so I'm gonna reuse aluminium, so that means I've gotta clean out the ultrasonic cleaner, and we're gonna remove as many impurities as possible. because I've got so many blooming pieces of aluminium. God, what a fucking mission. Just finished getting the three buckets ready for the Southern Classic, bring it on. It has been a while since I've been in the garage. I have been away racing and yeah, we did pretty good. That's the race bike and I have a second place there for the Southern Classic meeting, which I am over the moon with. Uh, it was a bloody good weekend's racing. Well, it was more than a weekend, it was three days and yeah, down there for four. So back on to the project. So I'm gonna do some machining. I've been practicing doing threading. So as you can see here, I actually made a good, if it's gonna focus, I actually made a usable thread. I finally figured out all the little gremlins on the lathe for turning uh, metric threads and very happy with that. Now in order to make a part successfully, I've whipped up a rather rough uh, plan of this banjo bolt. Now I think it's totally doable, so let's uh, get to work. Now that's half of the banjo bolt done, I just need the dividing head up and running and I can finish it off. I've been busy making an adapter so that I can mount the lathe chuck to my dividing head and I was on a roll, I cut this beautiful M40 by 3 internal thread, it took me quite a while and it didn't fit because cut a left hand thread. I had this freaking knob here in this position instead of this position because I was cutting outwards instead of cutting inwards so that I was less likely to crash the machine and now I have to start completely from scratch because I'm a dumbass. Oh well, I suppose I'm going to learn one way. <laughs> Fuck. Stop. 
Stop. Stop. And so it begins. I took a hundred passes probably to get it to the correct depth. And then I cleaned it up with the wee wire wheel on the Dremel. And it was looking pretty good. This is the part that needs to screw into it. Is it even close? Okay, it starts, but I need to go deeper. And as you can see, I have a beautifully formed thread in there, which for some reason does not fit. It goes a tiny bit more and it's tight. So I have a feeling this may actually be an imperial thread and not three mil pitch metric thread. That really sucks and I have wasted enough time on this for now. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Might make some camshafts. And also another thing I learned, if you put oil on your lathe truck, it ends up all over you. <laughs> first things first when it comes to designing the camshaft, so I need to do a dry assembly of the engine, and then once I've got that all together, I can see where the crank sprocket wants to sit, and I can line that up perfectly with where the cam sprocket needs to be in the head. And I'll add those measurements down to my wee uh, piece of paper, take the other measurements off the CAD software for the design for the cylinder head, I do a bit of research on some Formula One uh, cylinder heads and stuff like that. Any notes, I just write them down as well. And then I am going to be using some design inspiration from the original cams as well. And I am going to use the original cam sprockets because that's just easier to do. And then when I've got all that, I just go into my CAD software and I design the camshafts from the ground up. And I try to make them as light as humanly possible pretty much so i'll build them and then once i'm happy with it i'll look at it and i'm like well i can remove material there and i just keep doing that until there's pretty much nothing left of them so yeah these ones are actually weighed about 179 grams total which is insane and yeah pretty happy with how it turned out and it's pretty spiffy and now on to casting number three the mold has finished its burnout cycle and it is probably one of the best looking ones i have done to date you look in there at the water jacket and everything, everything looks pretty darn good. There's a couple small cracks, but other than that, it looks bloody good. Now is the last lot of investment I've got. So I've got one shot, one opportunity to seize everything, you know, I ever wanted. So <laughs> let's see how we go. And after digging out the latest attempt, I am actually pretty chuffed with myself. This one is definitely the best one so far, has a really good surface finish, all of the parts seem to be exactly where they're supposed to be, and there's no holes in it. And that's good, so all I have to do is cut it open, do some machining, and see what it looks like inside. And of course this was attempt three, attempt one, the core broke, I thought I'd give it a go anyway uh, to practice the degassing and see how the ceramic filter affected the mould filling. So I learnt a few things, um, and this one to be honest only has a couple holes in the water jacket, otherwise it would be usable. 
Attempt two, I'm not sure what I did wrong here. I think I didn't degas it long enough or potentially the burnout wasn't hot enough because yeah, there was obviously some sort of contamination because there's a little bit of porosity and the surface finish is kind of crappy looking. Um, so yeah, learned a lot with that. Pretty chuffed with the camshaft design. Apparently, according to the Fusion, it is less than half the weight of the original camshaft. So that is good. Uh, and I've just ordered some steel for that as well. And as far as the crankshaft, yeah, I've got this now. I just need to get the dividing head sorted and then start doing some machining on this. So once again, a massive thanks to Brendan Duff. He is a legend. And yeah, if you want help with any sort of stuff like this, he can help you out. And yeah, I think that's about it. So this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.